Good afternoon, everyone. Laura Longo here. So happy to be here with you. In this edition of Laura Longo Live, we're going to talk about the nine roles of a salesperson and why, if you're skipping even just one of these, you're not likely to be getting the results that you deserve, right? So only if you're looking to get better results, close more sales, help more people, have more people duplicate on your team, have more fun, make more money, then stay tuned. And in the meantime, as you hop on, just tell me who you are, where you're watching from, and, and do me a favor, please. Um, if this is your first time on one of my live broadcasts, then just type a one in the comments below. And if you're like a regular on these lives, then go ahead and type a two. I just like to get to know my audience, who I'm chatting with. So, I'm gonna ask you to, if you will, get present with me here. And if you're in a position where you can, uh, grab a pen and paper. You might wanna jot down some notes as we go through this here today. So, to get started, Tell me this, does the thought of being considered a, a salesperson or a salesy make you anxious? Does the title um, of a salesperson intimidate you in any way, possibly? Hey, Mark, great to have you on. So what often happens here is that people are so afraid of sounding salesy or maybe nosy or intrusive that they end up skipping a lot of really important steps in the sales process so that they end up doing exactly that. They end up sounding salesy. So ask yourself this question, okay? Do you believe in what you're doing? I hear my kids coming, oh boy. <laughs> Do you believe that your products can help people, right? Can your products and what you're doing, hey Lynette, oh, so glad you're on. So nice to see all you guys popping on here. So do you think that your products, you know that your products can help people, change people's lives in a positive way? Do you believe that your opportunity can help people create time freedom or flexibility to do more of the things that they love, to spend time with more of the people that they love? If so, I totally commend you for, for being here, being on this live video, to invest the time into yourself to learn how to get better and at doing this, right? And to put yourself in a better position to truly be able to help these people. Now, I've gone through a training with Phil Jones, um, and it was, it was brilliant. So I, I'm going to share some of what I've learned from that training. And as... Bill Jones says, and write this down please, um, a salesperson is someone who earns the right to make a recommendation. A salesperson is someone who earns the right to make a recommendation. So with that said, never, ever, ever make a recommendation without being able to say to the person, it's because you told me this, or it's because of the fact that you said that I'm making this recommendation. Okay, so if you do that, you're skipping a step and going right into that presentation without finding why they benefit from what you have, it, it's, it's not gonna work so, so well. So you need to do discovery, so we know what the products can do for people. And we know what our opportunity can do for people, but they still don't. So you have to really be able to get personal and understand why specifically this, this can help that specific person, okay? So what often happens in the sales cycle is that you have someone who says they're interested and you pitch them a video, but you miss that whole step in between. So then we face like all this rejection and we don't understand why, right? But the reason is because there has to be more effort. So people are so focused on the quality of their pitch, the quality of their presentation, that they, they, you know, there's not this one size fits all presentation. Not everyone's the same. Everyone has different goals, right? So 
where the presentation, where the presentation in, fits in the process is also really important. And people have to also be made, made aware that, of what's involved, right, and, and believe they can do what's involved. So you really have to get good and learn some new skills to get good at recruiting. And um, to do that, you have to play a lot of different roles. You have to wear a lot of different hats, and you have to do it in a particular order for it to make sense. So if you're on here and you can hear me, I just uh, can you just say yes in the comments? Just have it, I want to make sure that I didn't put my uh, microphone on, so I just want to make sure everyone can hear me here. So um, I know there's a little bit of a delay, so uh, if you can just let me know, you can hear me, that'd be cool. Thank you. So there's three, three reasons why you might not be recruiting right now. So one could be that you're not talking to enough people. Uh, the second would be you're not talking to the right people. And uh, thanks, Lynette. Awesome, Mark. Thank you. And three, you're, you're saying the wrong things and skipping these really important steps in the process, okay? So you have to work through each of these roles with your prospects. And I heard these from Phil Jones and thought they were brilliant. And so he gets all the credit here, uh, but I thought they really could help you out. So grab a pen and here they are. So the first role that you have to play in doing what we do as networkers, as as marketers, as um, salespeople, right, is a fisherman. So when you're looking for prospects, decide, you know, decide whether you're going to cast like this wide net where you're looking for everybody and anybody, or you're you're going hunting, you know, with a spear to to catch that perfect person. Okay, so regardless, you have to make sure you right you have that that right bait. Yeah, you often will you'll find that you you'll find people who are just like you too. Have you ever noticed that, guys? So, and I'm sure you've heard me say this like so many times, but you have to know your target market and you have to know how you're going after them. So you might, you might do this by saying something or asking, you know, you wouldn't happen to know someone who has a spare 10 hours a week that's interested in earning a few hundred extra dollars a month, would you? Right? So the next person you have to be in the process is, number two, is the detective. So this is really, really important. A lot of people skip this step, okay? You have to find out the reasons why. Why? Why could this help people achieve what they want, okay, what they want? So find out what problems they have that you can help them with. And, again, never make a recommendation unless you can say to them, it's because of the fact that you said, and this can be used later once you have all this evidence, but the, the key here is, is to not – give the solution right away because we get so excited right like we know what it does for people what we know what we have can how, how it can help people right but they are still on the other side of this and if you're too eager to give that solution right right away you really haven't connected to the point of them being able to trust you with that recommendation does that make sense so you got to build your evidence for that compelling why, that compelling reason why you're going to make that specific recommendation. And this is also important, like during this discovery phase, during that conversation where you're going to ask, you know, how much time they have to devote to something new, a side project. Um, this is where you eliminate some of those objections up front, um, finding out their attitudes towards network marketing or, or how much money they have to devote to towards improving their health or whatever it is uh, that you're, you're promoting, right? So only, only once you've done this detective work and you've identified this problem, you get to be the doctor. So number three is doctor. And this is where you can prescribe something for them, okay? So, hey, Amanda. Oh, so happy you're here. So your opportunity is going to solve a problem for them. Your product is gonna solve a pro problem for them, right? You've identified the symptoms, you, you know what the main problem is, and now you're, you're prescribing that solution, okay? So something really cool that Phil said in this training is that remember that if you're a doctor, a prescription before diagnosis is malpractice, okay? That makes total sense here. I'll say it again if you're taking notes. A, a prescription before diagnosis is malpractice. 
So the detective work is where you build trust and that step is so critical and you, you really cannot move on to being the doctor until you've done that, okay? So once you've, you've made that pres prescription, you've made that recommendation, right? You get to be the presenter. Um, this is where you get to do like the one-on-one -on -one or show them a presentation um, that's tailored toward their specific needs. Um, this is where you get to, to relate to them, be empathetic to their specific problems or reasons why they pursue something new, right? Um, show them how you have a solution based on the detective work that you've done. And at this point, selling, you might want to write this down, is a transfer of enthusiasm. So presenters, the presenters that you like the most are, are going to be like enthusiastic. They're going to be passionate. And you have to be excited at this point in the presentation. And I know for me, presenting, I w will often actually try to take it down a few notches of how passionate I am about it because I don't want to come off like I'm too hyping because I get so excited. Uh, but you really, you just want to transfer that enthusiasm to, to someone. Um, the pre presentation component is where you are creating that belief in someone or instilling that belief that they can do it too, right? So one of the key, one of the biggest reasons people won't join you in a business, it's not because they don't want to be a salesperson. It's not because of the money. It's not really because of the time, but it's because they don't think that they can do it. You got to show them that they can. Okay. So at this point, number five is you get to be the jury. This is where you get to kind of help people through that decision making process. This is where you can say like, based on what you've said, based on your reasons, based on the information I have after we've talked, wouldn't this make sense? Right? So as as a jury, it's important to make them see that there's really only one choice for them, okay? So the best way to get someone to say yes, as Phil Jones says, is to destroy the option of no. Make no a bad idea. Again, we understand already because we've been on the other side. They haven't been yet. So make no a bad idea. Don't tell them that you have, you have the best plan for them Help them see that the plan or the, the, the actions that they're taking now isn't the best plan, right? It's, it might not be the best plan for them. So this is when it's decision time. This is time for, the, for them to make that decision. And this might be a point where you might need some support in making this decision. It might be where you bring in someone for a three-way call or maybe a longer video that will help add weight to your argument. But again, it's your argument here not the argument of the video. It's your argument argument based on what they've told you specifically for them, okay? So I hope that makes sense. And once they say yes is when the, you know, the, fun, the fun starts, right? So at that point, you get to be the parent. Uh, the parent is when you get to hold their hand in the early days. Um, you give them you know, bite-sized steps to get started over the first maybe two weeks or so. Um, and you progress feeding off their, their pace, you know, maybe for the next three months. So you got to take responsibility for helping them become more independent. That's the key. Um, you don't want them to have to rely on you for everything. That you have, They have to know where to find specific information. And most likely, your companies have that instilled, right? So give them what they need, but also be willing to hold back what they don't need yet. Because... If someone out of the gate feels overwhelmed, they may not feel like they can do it, right? So next role, number seven, is teacher. Once they've gotten started uh, and they've, they've been open and receptive to, to being taught, to being coached, right? At this point, they can be taught because they have, like, they have some re experience that they can relate it to. So if you try to teach people things right away at first, it, it doesn't necessarily work so great, okay? Because unless they have some real world experience related, related to there, it just doesn't work. So like some of these ideas that I'm sharing with you, they might 
makes sense for you only because you've tried them maybe a different way, maybe it didn't work for you, and and now hearing this, it might make sense only because you've had that relatable experience, right? So the eighth role of a salesperson is a coach. Um, the coach is the qu the person who's going to ask you those questions, those those hard questions that you might not ask your ask yourself, right? Um, a coach will help with accountability. So, so people will do what they say they're going to do. Um, the coach will celebrate the wins, and they'll commiserate the the losses or when things don't go as planned um, to a degree. You don't want to get stuck there for sure. And basically, a coach the coach's job is to encourage the peak performance out of an individual, and and help them see the best in themselves. Okay, does that make sense? So once you've done all these things is when you really get to be their friend. If their friend meaning now you're on the same level. You're on the same team with a mutual respect. Um, they're doing things independently and um, you're working together, you know, on that mutual mission, right? So. So what you got to do at this point is to look through your notes, um, look through your nine steps, and and decide which ones of these you're you're not so good at. So maybe you are, maybe you are really good at the detective, the de asking questions, the detective work, but you're not so good at parent and coach, and so people fall off. So take a look and see where are your weak, weakest links, and where can you improve your skills so that you can get better. At this whole entire process so what do you think what do you think do you think this will help you get some success in, in, in doing things in a more professional way so it's here like it's here when, when slowing down the process will actually speed up the outcome you know this look to really build relationships to give them the confidence to take that leap of faith because um, really you are asking them to make a significant change to their lifestyle if they're going to give us a go. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you so much. Now, I want you to understand this and, and trust me that if you start to, to do these steps in this order, that you're going to start seeing results. And, and the business, this business is really about selling success, whether it's success with the product, success with the, the business outcomes, right? And you got to have fun with it. You know, no one's going to want to join you if you're not having fun, right? And a lot of us are having a lot of fun, right? Uh, thanks so much, Rob. Thank you. So happy that you enjoyed it. So was this helpful? I hope this was helpful for everyone. If you love content like this and you think this can help you out in your business, um, feel free to check out my blog. It's lauralongo.com. I have lots of free training over there. And on the main page there, there's a totally free download uh, for how to respond when someone gives you the money objection. Uh, which, you know, we get that all the time, right? So go ahead, grab that, and thank you, everyone, for watching. So great to be with you.